Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is a personality that possesses several human attributes. Although he is not visible, yet he speaks, he moves, and interacts. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the believers. It isn't hard for God to give his Holy Spirit to those who ask of him. However, keeping a smooth relationship with the Holy Spirit is a must for every believer who will host him in their lives. Believers need to understand that the Holy Spirit, which is given as our companion, can be grieved. The reason many Christians hinder their relationship with the Holy Spirit is because they have grieved him. Therefore, it is important for us to know the things that grieve the Holy Spirit and for us to avoid these things. If we do not grieve the Holy Spirit, we will enjoy his ministry in our lives, in our marriages, in our homes, in our churches, and in our society. I honestly believe that the day we are in heaven, one day we will look back on our lives and we will finally realize how hugely dependent we are on the Holy Spirit. We need him, my friend. We need him more than we could ever imagine or more than we could ever know. We need the Holy Spirit and we need to stop grieving him. So, what grieves the Holy Spirit? To grieve the Holy Spirit is to cause him to be sorrowful or distressed. The same way the Holy Spirit can be happy when we promptly follow his leadings, he can also be grieved when we fail to obey him. Here are five things believers can do that grieve the Holy Spirit. Number one, disobeying his instructions. John 16, 13. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. One of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to instruct believers, is to guide them on the path of truth. He is the spirit of truth and he leads and he guides, not in a forceful manner. Whereas demons and demonic spirits force people to do things against their will. The Holy Spirit instructs believers and gives them a gentle push. However, he expects absolute obedience from the believer when he guides them. The failure of believers to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit grieves him. In Acts 8.29, the Holy Spirit instructed Philip to join an Ethiopian eunuch in his chariot and preached him. Philip obeyed the prompting of the Holy Spirit and then that eunuch was eventually won to Jesus Christ. You could imagine if Philip had disobeyed the Spirit's voice then his soul would have been lost. We should not disobey the Holy Spirit because if the truth be told we do not know the repercussions of what will happen if we disobey him. Unfortunately, we may not even be aware of the loss that happens. For instance, if Philip did not go on that road, he was instructed to go on by the Spirit. He wouldn't have known that a soul was lost to the devil and would have grieved the Holy Spirit. Often, after our obedience is fulfilled, we get to realize why the Holy Spirit has instructed us to do certain things. Not doing them, however, causes him pain. Secondly, another thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is denying him. Hebrews 6 verse 46, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh 
and put him to an open shame. It would be unpardonable for any man who has known and partook of the Holy Spirit and has tasted his wonders to deny him willfully. Christ had borne our griefs on the cross of Calvary. How grievous it will be if we cause his Holy Spirit more hurts by putting him to an open shame. Sometimes, believers are faced with the temptation of renouncing their faith in Christ in order to be accepted in some spheres of life. Some believers are also ashamed to be publicly associated with Christ. Renouncing your faith, hiding your beliefs from public awareness or denying Christ as a believer are grievous offenses against the Holy Spirit of God. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 10, 33? But whoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. This is a verse that does not need explanation. You can reach your own conclusion with this verse. These are the words of Jesus. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. But whosoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Now I want you to think of the horror that moment would be. Being denied by Jesus in front of God in heaven. Brethren, let us not grieve the Holy Spirit by denying him. Thirdly, we grieve him by acting outside of the word of God. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit does not lead believers against the word of God. The promptings and instructions of the Holy Spirit are always tandem with the word of God. He reminds us of the scriptures. He reminds us of the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Spirit does not deviate or contradict the Holy Scripture. They work in union. His instructions are completely in unity with the Word of God. Therefore, any time a believer acts defiantly against the Word of God, he or she grieves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God are inseparable. When you twist God's word and act outside of its context as against the will of the Holy Spirit, you are causing him to grieve. Whatever we do against the word of God grieves him. Fourthly, committing willful sins. 1 John 3, 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. John 3, 6, whosoever is born of God is also born of the Holy Spirit. Anyone born of the Spirit is not expected to sin. Anyone born of the Spirit is not expected to sin deliberately because he is the image of God and God's seed is in him. Remember that there are different kinds of spirits, but the Spirit of God is holy. Any believer that toys with sin is already grieving the Holy Spirit, although we may not be able to reach the level of perfection in the flesh. However, being in the flesh is not an excuse to willfully sin. If after we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and have been gifted with the Spirit of God, we still choose to commit sin, then the Holy Spirit becomes grieved. Now the fifth point I want you to focus on is relying on your strength. This is closely linked with the spirit of pride. Let's look at Zechariah 4.6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. 
no one can successfully carry out God's assignment by his own spirit. No believer can successfully complete this Christian journey by their own power. There are no physical methods of carrying out spiritual assignment. That was why the Holy Spirit is given to the believers to be successful in their Christian journey. 1 Samuel 2 verse 9 says that by strength shall no man prevail. Stop relying on your own strength. By relying on your own strength and refusing to depend on the Holy Spirit, we undermine his divine ministry in our lives and thereby cause him to grieve. The Holy Spirit is interested in the smallest matters in our lives. When we trust in our strength, finances, connections, at the expense of the Holy Spirit, it grieves him. Children of God, brothers, sisters, we need to stop grieving the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers is such a wonderful thing. However, we must learn how to relate effectively with him so as it is to keep enjoying his divine assistance. It takes a believer that is totally surrendered to the Holy Spirit to enjoy the full benefits of his ministry. Grieving the Holy Spirit, however, hinders our relationship with him.